Hey, what's up guys? You're in the middle of leg day and I want to show you guys one of my favorite exercises to build lower body size and lower body strength. So we're sitting on a machine today, this is a pendulum squat. And there's a couple of reasons to why I prefer using a machine, especially one like the pendulum, over something like a typical barbell back squat. Now, don't get me wrong, a typical barbell back squat is still a really good exercise to build up lower body strength and lower body size, but it is not without its limitations. So when you think about the way that a typical barbell back squat works, it's only really, really challenging you in that bottom position. So like that bottom quarter or so, that's where your sticking point is. And that's part of why you have that sticking point there, because that's where in terms of your leverages, uh, the exercise is at its hardest. And then as you go through the squat from the bottom up, it gets easier and easier and easier. And that's part of why when you see somebody squatting, once they grind through that bottom third, they just snap up to the top. Now, what does that mean from an overall stimulation standpoint? What does it mean in terms of how much you're going to get out of that exercise? Because it's still a very, very valid exercise to be doing. But if we were to sort of, I guess, plot this out on some kind of a, of a chart, if we say that the start of the squat is at the very bottom before you start squatting up, and the end of the squat is the very, very top, you'll see that resistance or the amount of load that's placed upon your body is very, very high at the start, and then it drops off down towards the end or that final quarter. That's what the nerds call a drop off. So what this means is there's going to be a drop off in the amount of stimulation that your lower body muscles receive. And that's where something like the pendulum squat or different types of machines can help to make up for that discrepancy. So what you'll see here on the pendulum is that you're not squatting straight up and down. And the load, so the plates on the machine, they don't move straight up and down either. Instead, as you squat down, these plates, they swing inwards towards the joint of the machine. And up on the other side here, you have this extra little counterweight. So this here, this pivot point, is the joint of the machine. As you squat down, this counterweight draws away from it. So both of those two forces combined, this is part of why it's called the pendulum, because it's not straight up and down, it actually travels like a swinging pendulum. The counterweight provides more assistance and the weight draws in closer to the joint which drops off the overall resistance at the hardest point. So if we were now to go back and think about that chart in terms of the start and the finish of the squat, at the very start of the pendulum squat, i.e. in the bottom, that is where resistance is a little bit lower. And then as you push up towards the end of the squat, that's where the weight increases or the resistance increases and the counterweight decreases, which makes the exercise a lot more challenging in that top half to top third. So now what we have is a very, very even distribution of resistance throughout the entire range of motion. And that's part of why a machine like this tends to feel so good. So if somebody always says like, oh, I feel my lower back or I feel my knees or I feel like I lose position a lot. Of course, a lot of it's going to do with their technique on how they're squatting normally. But a lot of it is also to do with how the resistance changes through the range of motion of a typical free weight exercise. And that's a big reason as to why I love to use different types of machines, particularly something like the pendulum squat. Now, of course, when it comes to you and your gym and what you might have available, not a lot of gyms are going to have something like a pendulum squat. And maybe if they do, they might have different brands that aren't as ideal as this one here. So this one is uh, the Atlantis brand, which I quite like. The other brand I really like is the original formulators or I guess the engineers of the pendulum squat, which is Paramount. But again, not a lot of gyms are gonna necessarily have these two brands. So what I found with most of the other brands is it's very, very hit and miss. Maybe the foot plate is set too far away, or the angle isn't perfect, or maybe there's no counterweight set, or there's not enough of a pendulum swinging motion when you go through the exercise. So it really does come down to if you have one of these machines, you've got to feel it, and you've got to see if you notice that very, very even resistance throughout the entire range of motion. The other thing that you want to be aware of is if you don't have one of these machines is you can still use things like maybe a machine hack squat or even just a basic leg press machine and you can try to make up for that change in resistance because they are very similar where they're very hard at the bottom 
and they get exponentially easier as you reach the top position, you can make up for that discrepancy by using things like accommodating resistance, such as tying a band or a reverse band to the hack squat or a reverse band to the leg press. These are all little things that I like to use when it comes to training to get as much as I can out of building strength and building size in any muscle throughout my body. But this is one of the things that I love to do all the time as a base exercise when it comes to training the legs. So I'd love to hear your thoughts. What do you guys think? Do you guys use a lot of machines when it comes to your primary lower body exercises? Or are you someone who sticks a little bit more towards your typical deadlifts and your typical barbell free weight squats? Let me know your thoughts below. Let me know if you've used one of these guys and I'm gonna see you guys next time. Okay, so I've already done two work sets and I wanted to show you guys one of the work sets, but then I realized I had a lot of background music playing and YouTube doesn't like it when you have background music playing because they're gonna ax the video. Not good, so it means I've got to do one more in complete silence, just for you guys. Here we go. I hope that was as good for you as it was for me. The things you do for content, right? <laughs> the life of YouTube. <laughs> <laughs>